He is our friend Jerry Hamilton. Jerry, how are you, man? What's up, Jerry? I'm great, man. How are you guys doing? No, 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 no Texas football talk on the radio this week at all, right? None. <laughs> Not none. enough. <laughs> yeah, people, people don't uh, need any of it. They don't want any of it. There's no red meat needed. Uh, but hey, uh, so now that we we talked ahead of the Alabama game, we talked about how big that game could be for recruiting. Now it's over, and the Longhorns won it by double digits. Uh, what's been the impact so far from your read on the recruiting trail? Well, it, it, I think it's been all positive for Texas, as you'd imagine. Um, it, it's interesting. I'm going to go to uh, the On Texas Football YouTube channel. We had a live stream last night with Rod Babers and myself were on mm-hmm. there. And K.J. Lacey, the Texas 2025 quarterback commit, was uh, came in and spent about eight, ten minutes with us. He was at the Texas-Alabama game. So, Texas fans, that's the On Texas Football YouTube channel. If you want to see that K.J. Lacey interview, um, but, uh, you know, I, the most the funniest part to me was w- when we asked K.J. Lacey, you know, about the impact in recruiting it has. And he's, Rod, what did he say? My phone was blowing up yep. after the game, right? Yep. I mean, <laughs> these kids talk. They talk. Or they know each other. Uh, this is where recruiting's different nowadays. So, yeah, the reception for, uh, for the Texas staff, is it, it's been amazing on the recruiting front. And that doesn't always equal uh, commitments right away. I, I think – some fans can get carried away. Well, who's flipping? When's somebody committing? These kids work off their own timelines. They're in their own lanes. Uh, but the main thing to know is that Texas is getting great feedback from guys they want to get great feedback from in the 24 class right now. But the big thing for me about a game like this, guys, is what it does in the future of recruiting. Mm. And when you look at it, if you look at Texas, Alabama, there are more kids from the state of Georgia that were – guest recruits of Alabama than any other state Saturday night. That is the toughest state for Texas to recruit in right now because Georgia's on top of the college football world. It's easy to recruit in Louisiana. They're your neighbor. It's easy to recruit in Florida. Those programs aren't on top right now. And Tashard Choice had built-in relationships in Orlando and Southwest Florida from his days at Georgia Tech. So those areas were easier to target for Texas right now. They've had a little success in Mississippi, feedback in Alabama a little bit. But Georgia's been the toughest state. So what I think this win does, I think you're going to see this spring, as long as Texas goes and handles business, right, you're going to see this spring and this summer a lot more kids have interest in going to check out Texas and see what the University of Texas is all about. That's where that's what, what these wins do for you if you go have a great season. Because the one thing Alabama's had, Nick Saban has had, to his credit and his success, all the national attention you get continuously for more than a decade, he was able to get any kid on campus he wanted. Meet that kid, mental eval that kid, physically evaluate that kid at their camp, in their settings. That is a huge advantage in the talent evaluation part of this. The more kids Texas can get on campus through this win and the rest of the season – your recruiting gets better because you can make better decisions. You have more choices uh, of kids coming in. You can get more kids through your door to check out your program and spend time with you. So I think the returns you're going to see in recruiting are more than this 2024 class, which will be a top 10 class and maybe another top five class. It's going to be in 25 and 26. Hey, Jerry, is there a, a particular position? You know, uh, obviously, Sarkis done a great job constructing this roster over the last uh, few years. But is there a particular position uh, that needs to be a focus or that is a focus or an emphasis for Texas in recruiting this next cycle? Yeah, yeah. I think right now, you know, if you look at it, some of those top guys left on the board is Brandon Baker, the number one offensive tackle prospect in the country, ranked that way. It doesn't mean he's going to be drafted that way. He's the number one ranked tackle prospect in the country. He's a right tackle. With Christian Jones moving on to the NFL, Cam Williams has shown some signs, but that right tackle job is going to be open, competition. Mm. Kelvin Banks came in and won a left tackle job. Now the talent is different on the offensive line at Texas now versus when Kelvin got there. But Brandon Baker, it's easy to see a path for him at right tackle at Texas. Right tackle's in need in this class. Um, Corner, Kobe Black in this class. Ryan Watts is departing. Um, you know, you, you have some good young talent there. But when guys, when these starters depart, these kids see opportunity, right? I mean, Rod went and lived this and went through this process. So Kobe Black is yeah. a is top corner on the board. Then there's Wardell Mack committed to Florida. Corey Gibson committed to Clemson. Texas, if they could add two corners left in this class, they'd love to do it. Um, then you look at wide receiver. A.D. Mitchell Worthy, probably going pro after this year, right? 
uh, for Ryan Wingo out of Missouri. The five star is visiting this weekend. That's an inviting place to be for recruiters. Wow, I just watched A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy running up and down the field scoring touchdowns and making big plays in a win at Alabama. It, it, that's a pretty easy sell right now for Sark. Um, doesn't mean the recruitments are easy, but the sell is easy, especially when the offensive scheme. And, and Wingo and his family will be in town this weekend. So I'm looking at right tackle, corner, wide receiver. I think they've done a really good job addressing these. If they could find one more D tackle um, that fits their profile, think they would they've addressed size really well in this defensive line class with Alex January and DeAndre Robinson a guy that can play over the ball DeAndre can also play a three tech and be a really really good player down the line but in the nav Melvin Hills they found a fourth that could be a, a an aggressive guy that he can make penetrating plays I think they'd take a look at that Jerry Hamilton uh the best as always uh how about the uh, Micah Hudson situation uh, during the week Texas Tech lands the five star from Temple Lake Belton I don't think a huge surprise his father played football there at Texas Tech he had a great relationship with Joey McGuire you mentioned Ryan Wingo uh any surprise at all there or do you think that was a foregone conclusion and now Wingo becomes the target uh foregone conclusion I think Wingo's been the number one guy for Texas for a while um and I think that's kind of known, right? Uh, so Sarkeesian has personally recruited Ryan Wingo for over a year. Through his transition and his wide receiver coaching change in the offseason, he was he was the one recruiting Wingo. And then Arch Manning was involved in Wingo's official visit. There's, you know, there's a lot of things there. Chris Jackson's done a really good job with Wingo as well. But I think Wingo has been the top guy at wide receiver for a while. At Texas, and um, you know, so I, I think that was fully expected. Also, I would ask you this, Jerry: the um, you know the, the recruiting for the Longhorns. We talked about this. You know, the two of the biggest impact players for the Longhorns on Saturday night, and there were many of them, were uh, a freshman Anthony Hill, and then a freshman uh, redshirt and Ethan Burke. And if, if memory serves, both of those guys went to the tape, right? They were the last day commitments. They flipped yep. from A&M and flipped from Michigan, and, and Texas came in late. You always tell us about recruiting to the tape, recruiting to the finish line. Those two are great examples of how it can impact your club if you in, in your program if you do that and, and get those flips on signing day. Yeah, and I think that's been different. It's been an adjustment for Texas fans since Sarkeesian's got here. I kind of jokingly call it recruit through the whistle because if – coaches ask their players to play through the whistle then you have to recruit through the whistle on the other side of that to get those players Uh, but I think that's been tough for Texas fans because they're used to early recruiting right Matt got everybody used to early recruiting in the state of Texas Um, but this staff recruits through the whistle they're going to stay on their top targets now it's easy to blue blood school with the portal now because you can roll to the portal and fill a need that you don't fill in recruiting but it also makes it easier to stay on your A-list targets those guys that you say, okay, not only are they talented, but they're really good fits with our culture and our program. Uh, but what, what I think in the last class, guys, Jelani McDonald and Warren Roberson were senior year guys for Texas. I mean, Warren, a Texas staff went to watch Jamel Johnson, who was committed to Texas at the time, who's now at TCU, and Warren Roberson was playing on the team opposite him. And those guys ended up flipping. Warren Overson went to Texas and Javel Johnson with a TCU. That was a senior year evaluation. Ethan Burke, senior year evaluation. So Texas isn't going to move off their A-list targets that are committed somewhere else. And then they're also going to keep evaluating the senior class. Because somebody's going to pop up. A couple of kids are going to pop up that end up being targets of Texas. They say, okay, this kid fits the talent criteria, and he also fits that culture criteria. That's where the staff has done really well. And the only way – you maximize that is if you recruit all the way through these kids' senior year and keep evaluating these kids, making sure all the kids you sign are the best fits for what you're wanting to bring into the Texas program, not just athletically, but when they're not on the football field. Hey, uh, Jerry, I want to ask you about uh, just kind of Texas recruiting uh, philosophy. They've done such a great job in development, um, and you got to give Sark yes. and the coaches have a ton of credit. We've actually seen it, right, real time before our eyes guys get better uh, under, with, this staff's, uh, with this staff's development. Is it possible that now looking forward in recruiting that this uh, staff will – take chances on more, I don't know, more raw skill sets of players um, who may not be as polished, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the recruiting rankings. They're not as polished players uh, all around, but they project 
to be uh, really, uh, you know, uh, really dynamic players, but they just have very raw skill sets because they trust their development. Is that something that we could see more of with Texas doing, or are they already doing more of that, experimenting with some guys who may be a little on the raw side, but their upside is just tremendous? I think it's a great point, Rod, because as you build the talent of depth in your program, you have that ability to say, okay, this guy's a great fit for what we're looking for. It may take him a year or two to get where we want him to be as a player. But once you build the talent in your program and that depth, it's good to take three or four of those guys in a class that they don't have the expectations to come in and compete for a starting job day one. They understand, okay, here's, our, here's what we've done developing players at your position at Texas. This is where we see you. We, you know you're going to take some time. We know you're going to take some time. We love your talent, and we're going to get you there as a player. I, and I think it's a great point, Rod. And, again, once you build that talent of depth in your program, you can take a couple more of those guys in each class mm. and not have to rush them to the field yep. and take, your, uh, take that year or two developing those guys and get them ready to where they hit the field there's not a drop off. Love that, Jerry Hamilton. Yeah, the development has been there. Gosh, I mean, Anthony Hill Jr. Right, he flipped from A and M because he thought he saw the development of go. a Jalen Jalen Ford, and uh, we've we've seen it over and over now. Uh, all right, this weekend, uh, Jerry, it looks like a big weekend. Colin Simmons, who's already committed to Texas, apparently is going to be on campus for the game. And uh, who else is coming? What's the guest list look like for the Longhorns? Yeah, it's a really good guest list. Uh, Kobe Black to maybe to come in. Ryan Wingo's going to be there. Obviously, he's the headliner, five star receiver out of St. Louis University. That's an unofficial visit. He's already been to Texas officially. A lot of 2025s, this list kind of builds as the week moves along, but there's some really good 25 offensive line guys coming in. I'm talking like four or five guys ranked in the top 200 in the country in that 25 class. Michael Fasusi, the uber athlete uh, left tackle at Louisville High, he's coming back. I think it's his third visit since the spring to Texas, maybe fourth at this point. He is an elite athlete at left tackle with elite length. Um, He's in pa- he's as good a pass pro pro- prospect as you'll find. Um, he's coming back this weekend. Uh, there's going to be a number of those offensive line guys, top guys, a kid named De- Devin Harper from Captain Shreve in Shreveport, an area that I think Texas, Texas can have success recruiting. And, look, they've recruited well in Louisiana. South Louisiana is a different animal than up on I-20 uh, historically. But those kids on I-20, they'll travel to college a little bit more. Obviously, Nick Saban's had more success on 20 than anybody at Bama, which makes sense. But Devin Harper, uh, he was at LSU last weekend, and he's scheduled to be at Texas this weekend. So, I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about, drawing some eyes um, to Texas now. And that's one of the top offensive tackle prospects in the 25 class. He's from Captain Tree uh, in Shreveport, Louisiana. But then there's Andrew Marsh, a really talented receiver. Taz Williams, another talented receiver at Red Oak, both 25 guys. That class of 25 is going to be really impressive. It's going to be in Austin this weekend. But one thing I want to say, September 30th is all the Kansas games always set up to be the big 2024 player official visit weekend. So Texas coming off the win at Wyoming, it's going to be a raucous atmosphere. It's great for recruiting a night game, LED lights, everything. The September 30th in two weeks is is when Texas has been targeting for their official visits in that 24 uh, class for guys that aren't committed. Good stuff as always. That's why he's the best in the biz. You see him on uh, the on Texas on foot on Texas football uh, stream at YouTube with Inside Texas. Of course, reading him at Inside Texas. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you, and we'll talk uh, during the game on Saturday. Thanks, Jerry. You got it, man. Talk to y'all then. All right, there it is. That's why he's the best. Jerry Hamilton is the best. Hey, discovered one Rod Babers back in the day. First one that gave me uh, my bump in the recruiting world was one Jerry Hamilton, a young. A young spry He's Jerry still young. Hamilton. He's still he is young. young, but he was younger back then. I, mean, I also he's... want to thank Jerry for his help. And for everybody that tuned in to the uh, Watch It With Us, Watch With Us uh, on Texas Football oh, web yeah. stream during the game in the Alabama game, we had huge numbers, a lot of people checking in, and uh, hopefully that continues to grow because it is a fun way. And you, of course, joined me in the second quarter. It was really fun. Bobby Solid Burton thing. and Ian, Ian Boyd. Boyd and and it's just, yeah. it's just in-depth analysis and, and conversation during the game. And it's not distracting. It adds to the game, right? It when does you, add to it. You know, we, we watch the game with you, but then, you know, when, when they go to commercial, break we talk about the game so you know you know you can still go to the bathroom and come back whatever you got to do but it's a lot of fun we'll do it again this week with the uh, wyoming game we'll go live about 15 minutes before kickoff and then go all the way through the post game and then you're on the post game rod yes sir that's my man bobby burden and uh drew kelson that's the on texas football youtube channel Mm -hmm. for inside texas so that's where it'll be rod and i working and partner with those guys on a lot of things now this football season so if it's not on the horn uh, you can find it there. That's where you need to go, yes, right? Sir. When the games are over, 
Um, we do our pregame show from the Mockingbird Saloon, but then postgame on Texas football and in game on on 10 Texas football, the YouTube channel there with Inside Texas. You got you covered.